I'm Jason Larson, the technical business developer from Radwell International. Today we're going to be talking about the Indramat MKD series of motors. Uh, these motors are really cool motors. They were introduced um, by Bosch uh, uh, Rexroth Indramat in the mid 90s. Uh, they were really unique when they first came out. Um, one of the things that makes them unique is their incredibly robust feedback systems. Uh, they have a one piece casting design where it integrates the front housing and the main housing all into one piece. And what that does for you, that's going to um, eliminate two separate pieces, but it's also going to allow you to have uh, an incredible amount of robustness and concentricity of the rotor shaft uh, all in one piece. But there are some drawbacks that we'll talk about that later. Um, but what made this motor uh, very, very popular is its feedback device. Now, in a separate video, we went over um, feedback devices in more depth. If you want to refer back to that, you can. Um, but what this uh, motor is, it's a resolver-based motor, but it also has a circuit board in the back that keeps track of the position of the motor. Um, and what that'll do is that'll allow you to shut the motor off at the end of your shift, come back in the next morning, and it'll remember the position of where it is. Um, some of the things that we find go wrong with these, um, number one most popular is the bearings fail, front bearing, rear bearing, uh, they tend to fail quite a bit. Then we'll find that the feedback device, the board or the resolver will go bad, and then uh, perhaps after that the windings. Um, here at Radwell we offer many, many different replacement parts that we either have or we're remanufacturing in-house. Um, we can remanufacture this uh, connector housing here, the back cover. Um, we have a lot of other spare parts in house that can get you through. Now we're going to talk about um, repair modes for these motors. When should you send it in? When can you take care of it in the field? Um, if you're finding that you're shutting the motor off at the end of your shift and you're coming back in, you're getting a position fault, um, that very well may be the battery on the inside. So on the inside of this, it has a battery that tracks position. These are user replaceable. Um, they can be replaced in the field. They should be replaced with the power off and with the motor loaded, meaning the shaft stopped. In order to replace the battery in the field, it's a really simple operation. On the small motors, uh, MKD 025 through 041, you're going to have a T10 Torx here. There's going to be four of them. And the larger motors, the uh, 071 through the 112s, it's going to be a T20 here. So remove these four screws. The battery is going to be connected with this um, connector right here. It's okay. Go ahead and pull it off. Go ahead and pull the uh, gasket through, and you're going to have two T10 Torx holding the battery clip in. Um, just pull these two guys out, put your new battery in, replace your gasket, put it back on, Plug. make sure you plug in your connector and put it back in. It's a very simple operation. This should be done every couple of years. Don't wait until you have failures. That's when you run into problems. Um, this operation should be done with the power off and with the rotor in a very firm lock state. What you don't want to do is power it off and then roll the shaft around and it, it it will lose its position. Then you might have to go ahead and rehome your machine or something like that. Um, but it's very simple operation. We have two versions of batteries in stock, one for the smaller motors, one for the larger motors. And uh, those are on the screen right now. Also, when we talked about earlier, this uh, front housing being one piece, um, that is good for rigidity, but it, now it's bad for repair. So now in order to repair it, we can't just replace or repair this front housing. We have to go in and uh, rebore and sleeve this housing all the way from the back. But we can do that at Radwell, it's not a problem. So, uh, when should you send it in? You sh the manufacturer recommends every 30,000 hours of operation, you should replace the bearings. More than likely, whether, whether you need it or not. Uh, because of the, the in-depth repair procedures, it's going to be a whole lot cheaper for you to repair the, and replace the bearings before they go bad. So if the front, the front bearing goes bad, we know we have an uh, in-depth setup in order to uh, replace that front bearing. If the back bearing goes bad, now you have concentricity, concentricity errors where the resolver could now start rubbing on the inside of the housing. Now you're buying a new resolver. So every 30,000 hours, go ahead and send it in. Um, 
uh, the batteries you can replace yourself. Any any other kind of faults or errors, you can call in, ask for tech support, but more than likely, uh, you may need to send it in. Uh, in conclusion, you know, these motors came out in around 1995, but they've been discontinued for over 10 years now. There's a lot of them out there in the field, but Radwell has a lot of uh, experience with them. We have a lot of spare parts in stock for them. We can keep your machines running for an incredibly long time. For more information about Radwell or Radwell's repair services, visit us at radwell.com or connect with us on social media.